Hey, how are you? Well, I'm pretty excited about today's video because I think this will be uh, maybe the first clamp rack video ever posted on YouTube. And for help, I'll just look at Steve's video. I'm kidding, obviously. There's a million clamp rack videos out there, but I need a clamp rack. So I'm going to build a clamp rack on the T111 siding here and probably one for my squeeze clamps between the green cabinet and the siding. Now, I'm real excited about getting the shop organized the way it's becoming and the reason for that is in about two weeks I'm going to start building a few pieces of fine furniture which I'm really excited about. I mean, for the most part you see me build cabinets here in the shop and when you're building a cabinet you're not really paying attention to joinery and wood selection as much as you are when you're building fine furniture so in these upcoming projects I'll really be focusing on design and wood selection and so they should be a lot of fun it's something I love to do and don't often get the opportunity to do so I hope you tune in and check out those videos but for now let's just go ahead and get started on these racks it's going to be a little bit easier to build the rack for the squeeze clamp so I'll start with that one and the first thing I'll need is a piece of plywood that fits in between this cabinet and the piece of molding here on the side edge and this looks like it's just about 21 and a half inches. Here's a piece of 3 8 Baltic birch plywood, which will work great as long as it's long enough. And this is 22 and a half, so that'll be perfect. Next, I'll attach a piece of 1x4 poplar to the 3 8 plywood by screwing through the back. I'll measure down four inches on each side of the plywood and then connect the lines and draw a straight edge. Next I'll measure out and I'm just going to eyeball it about three eighths of an inch and drill a few holes. Now I'm going to flip the plywood over and countersink those holes so the plywood will fit flush with the wall. I'll hold the board flush on one side, mark a line, and cut it to length. Add a little wood glue. And then I'll use a few small nails to tack the board in place and that will just hold the board on the line until I get a chance to permanently attach it with a few screws. screws and a few finish washers and make sure to attach the rack to a stud. Okay, well that looks a lot better and it's really nice to finally have a home for those clamps. And so the next step is to work on a rack for these bar clamps. And for this I'm going to use a piece of five quarter ash that's been hanging around the shop forever. And the first thing I'll need to do is run it on the joiner. I just got my joiner up here in the barn. You'll see that next. And then I'll rip this down to three and a quarter inches. Well this is going to be the first time I used a joiner in the barn and I'm really happy to have it up here. You may know that I've always had a joiner, but it's been in the basement simply because I didn't have enough room in the shop. So I just got the joiner up here and I'm gonna have to do something. I'll have to make a lumber rack here because this isn't going to work with the lumber behind the joiner. But I'll, I'll have to think about how that's gonna work because I can't have the lumber too far back or I won't be able to get the plywood out of the plywood bin. But anyway, that's, that's probably next week. Thank you. 
Now I want to measure in 7 eighths of an inch from the back and draw a line. And I've showed this trick before where I can draw a straight line with a pencil on my fingernail, but I'll show you again just in case you've missed it. So I'm measuring from the back 7 eighths of an inch. I'll put my fingernail against the edge and sort of creep the pencil point out to 7 eighths of an inch and then just use my fingernail as a guide and make the straight line. Next I'll measure in from the edge here one inch, mark a line, and then mark a line every inch and a quarter from that line. I just cut a piece of scrap wood at an inch and a quarter just because it's, it's a lot easier than trying to hold the tape measure at an inch and a quarter and I'll just mark a line and then move the piece of inch and a quarter scrap over and mark another line. I'm getting down to the end of the board here so at this last mark I'll just measure over an inch and make another line and that's where I'll cut the board to length and that way I'll have the same reveal on this side of the board from the end of the board to the clamp and the same reveal on this side. And now I'll use the drill press to drill a 5 16 inch hole at each one of those marks. Now I'll use a combination square and draw a straight line from the side of each one of those holes. Now before I start cutting out these slots, I'll put a chamfer bit in the router just to clean up this bottom edge and that'll make it look a little bit nicer. I was originally going to use the jigsaw for cutting these slots out, but I, I think I'll get a cleaner cut using the table saw, so I'll see how that works, and if it seems a little scary because the blade is so high, then I'll go back to the original idea of using a jigsaw. I'll use a few L brackets to attach the rack and also a few screws through the center of the slot. Well, I'm, I have to say I'm really happy with this. It's so much nicer being in an organized space like this as opposed to uh, what the barn used to look like. I don't know if you remember that, but it was kind of a mess over here. So uh, it's going to be a lot more fun and probably a lot more productive having the space all organized. So I'm looking forward to dealing with the rest of the barn. I have a corner over there where everything is sort of pushed into now and I need to build that lumber rack behind the joiner. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you soon. Now I'm using a combination square and I'll draw a straight line or a square line across the board from the side of each one of those holes. Well, and now I'll use the drill press and drill a 5 16 inch, 5 16 of an inch hole. Goodness gracious, I can't say 5 16 And now we'll use the drill press to drill a 5 16 inch, what?